Running this channel involves a lot of digging, prowling, exploring down in the darkest corners of the internet. Throughout the years, we've gone down some of the internet's wildest rabbit holes in our internet investigation videos, dug through various cursed and cult-related video game urban legends and console conspiracies, and experienced some of the wildest real-life videos, events, and social media posts out there in disturbing things. While this catalog of series effectively spans a wide portion of the creepier side of the web, there's a glaring chasm of content out there that, surprisingly, doesn't seem to fit the mold that I've created for any of these. I throw a lot of potential topics away. Topics that have unnerved me and would most likely unnerve you because they're just weird. And that's where this series comes in. Welcome to episode one of Chronicles of Reddit a series dedicated to diving into the odd, strange, and bizarre part of the internet that doesn't quite fit the bill for a Disturbing Things episode or a full-fledged video. While the case, this series will still carry an anthology format and will be a more casual, analytical dive into the less disturbing, more puzzling mysteries on Reddit that I've stumbled upon in my hunts for video topics. Without further ado, sit back, because tonight, we're diving into three perplexing mysteries that I've recently discovered from Reddit. To lead off on this series, I'd like to redirect your attention to the Too Afraid to Ask subreddit. As the name suggests, the board's primary purpose is to house the various questions that one wouldn't be keen on asking publicly. There's a user that visited there a few months ago by the name of IcemanThrowaway123. Appearing to be a big fan of PCs and graphics cards, evident by his multi-month Reddit history, he was active in discussions spanning various boards related to the topic. Strangely, on July 29th of 2019, he'd make a post out of left field that would quickly climb its way to the top of Too Afraid to Ask. That morning, at 10.55 a.m., he'd submit it with the title. 12 mysterious and identical stores open on my streets. What could be happening? It reads as follows. I live just outside a big city in what resembles a suburban main street. Like many suburban main streets, retail business has been rough and they've all closed down. After a month of nothingness, suddenly 12, yes a dozen, identical convenience stores pop up. They look the same, they aim for the same floor plan, and they sell the same products at the same prices. The names are all tiny variations of each other, like Town Name Mart or Market of Town Name and all clearly bought their signs from the same place as the fonts, colors, size, and shapes are identical. These stores see no business, yet have large staff numbers and are surviving way longer than the former stores that closed on the street. When I enter one, they all stare at me while I shop. I don't usually get nervous, but it feels like they're staring threateningly rather than intently. They only accept cash unless you pay some 50 bucks. Most of their products are Walmart brand great value products being resold for higher prices. Most of the products are expired food products. I bought bread from one without checking because I was in a rush and it turned out that it was two months expired. Upon returning to show them, I found that the entire shelf was expired goods. What was even grosser was the dairy cooler which had ancient milk products. I'm so confused. I feel like I'm in an episode of the Twilight Zone. What's probably happening here? This post lit up like a wildfire. Users chimed in inquiring on details about his findings, and Iceman seemed to be fine with giving further details to help the case. Strangely, though, he was extremely hesitant to share anything that would give investigators even the slightest clue at the state or region in which he lives, which threw a huge wrench in figuring this out. Before we get to that, though, if we're assuming his story is legitimate, what's actually going on here? In one of his many follow-up comments, Iceman claimed various things, such as the fact that, quote, all the stores have expired food and seem to refresh every few weeks. And also, the bread I bought was a nasty shade of green on the inside. 
It seemed, at least to me, that this could have been a front for some sort of money laundering scheme. It all appears to check out as well. Create what appears to be a legitimate business in hopes of circulating your cash flow and buy back into your own store. Considering that this is what OP considers an old town, they might have figured that people simply wouldn't question it. Regardless though, this is just one theory in and of itself. Another Redditor actually suggested something that might be even more plausible. The comment submitted by a user named Infier reads as follows. Food stamp fraud. It's not a good fit for money laundering. The last thing you'd want for money laundering is a business with traceable inventory. There's probably some organization that's buying food stamps or fraudulently getting EBT cards and using them to charge fake food at these stores. Now, considering that the food stamp black market is and has been on the rise, this could very well explain this. Buy food stamps for cash, lessen their value, and charge them fully on the overpriced and expired goods at your store. Makes sense. So case closed, right? Well, I'd say so. However, there's one more layer to this that makes this entire situation a bit stranger. Let's back up for a second. Iceman Throwaway, contrary to his name, actually has an extensive multi-month post history like we mentioned prior. He was incredibly active on various PC and graphics card related subreddits. However, the last post he ever made was this one. As of today, he's completely gone, vanished entirely from reddits. Of course this added fuel to an already burning flame of utter curiosity, and so the question lingered in the back of my mind. What happened to Iceman? In one of his comment responses to people asking about this, he claimed that he'd go back to the streets and take pictures to substantiate his claims. But those never actually materialized. This ended up leading to two predominant theories. On one hand, some were conjecting that he could have been caught taking photos and was possibly reprimanded or killed. On the other, though, many were shouting hoax. Personally, I'm led to believe the latter. While Iceman's sudden disappearance after making this post is suspect, at the end of the day, his name is Iceman Throwaway. For all we know, he could have easily started this account with the full intention of shutting it down at some point thereafter. And who knows, he could have simply wanted to go out with a bang, leaving his everlasting mark on the subreddit. A five month long post history really isn't that long at all in the grand scheme of things and the sheer plausibility of this being an alternate account really drives this theory home. With the lack of any location information, combined with the absence of images or any search results from other people that might be suspicious of 12 sketchy stores that might have randomly popped up in their town, it seems, at least to me, that this was all a fabricated story that grew larger than Iceman ever thought it would. While intriguing, all we can really do is wait. On one hand, if he does return to Reddit with photo or location proof, then that will lead us down another intriguing rabbit hole in and of itself. If not, though, then we're simply left with another case of OP not delivering, leaving this entire situation shrouded in mystery as one of the weirder and more perplexing oddities that came and went faster than we could ever find the answers for. I'm not sure about you, but I'll definitely be following this. For all we know, I could be wrong but it looks like only time will tell. This next entry involves an odd situation that played out on the legal advice subreddits about five years ago. At about 6 a.m. on Tuesday, February 24th of 2015, a user by the name of Concerned Hubs would make a post with the title, Need advice on talking to police regarding my wife. It reads the following. My wife hasn't returned home since she went out shopping late Saturday. It's getting to the point where I should call the police to file a missing persons report. I'd like to be as helpful as possible when speaking to the cops, but I want to avoid triggering any suspicions about me. I hear a lot of stories of husbands being falsely accused when something happens. Should I only give them info in response to certain questions? Is there anything else I shouldn't bring up? 
I'm planning on contacting the police tomorrow morning. I can't postpone much longer as I'm getting messages asking about her and I don't want to say anything to her friends or family until I file the report first. I now realize that I should have talked to her friends and family first, but at this point, I don't want to explain why I didn't file a report yet. And like gas on a flame, the comments blew up. So where'd you hide her body? Seriously, just from this fucked up post, I think you killed her. There's absolutely nothing you can say or do to avoid triggering suspicion. You absolutely should call the cops. Don't do it tomorrow. Do it right now. Unless your wife is in the habit of disappearing for days at a time, what the fuck are you thinking? If I last heard from mine Saturday, I'd be totally freaking out. Mods chimed in too. This is, if true, one of the most fucked up posts I've ever seen on here, and that's really saying something. Your wife disappears for 48 hours and you have not yet contacted authorities when most people would do it within a few hours. You haven't contacted her friends and family to ask if they've seen her or to let them know there's a problem. Even now, you plan to contact police tomorrow morning, waiting yet another 12 hours for no reason whatsoever. Before contacting police, however, your main concern is to avoid suspicion on yourself. You're asking about procedural questions for talking to police when for all you know, your wife could be kidnapped, injured, or worse. You demonstrate no concern for her safety whatsoever, and only concern for yourself. I'm sure you get the picture by this point. This so-called plea for help was raising red flags left and right. Some even compared the situation to the plot of Gone Girl, as he appears to simply be putting on a front, acting like he's worried about his wife. But the thing is, He's three days too late. Remember how I told you that he posted this on a Tuesday? Yeah, he waited that long. And so he sends out comment after comment after comment, defending himself from the onslaught of responses that were grilling him for his inaction. Sorry, I'm a bit sensitive right now. I've never been charged with abusing my wife. I did not kill her. She is not dead. And a few hours later, he'd post an update. Update. It turns out that she left a note for me saying that she was leaving town for a while to spend time with an old friend, so there's no need to report her missing as of now. I'm going to have my wife's best friend make some calls to my wife's family and friends to let them know that she's okay. Now my first thought when I read this was that she really must be old fashioned. With the advent of the modern smartphone having happened about eight years prior, you would think that something as primitive as a note would be insufficient notice for your significant other taking some sort of random vacation out of nowhere. This single detail led me to question whether it actually exists or is simply a decoy to get people to calm down. This is further supported by the fact that he stated that she'd been missing since she, quote, went out shopping late Saturday night. You'd think that if this were the case and she decided to get up and leave from shopping on some sort of random vacation out of nowhere. A simple text message, a phone call, or anything for that matter would be a more effective way to give someone a heads up. But hey, to each their own. Regardless, though, according to the OP at least, she ended up being okay. Whether or not this was just a front to get people off his back or to allow the conversation to die down, this post and situation stands as a testament to the fact that if you act sketchy in an attempt at absolving yourself of suspicion, then suspicion just might find its way to you. Last up is something that's intrigued me for months. I've considered making a full video on this, fleshing out the sheer mystery that we're about to get into, but given the fact that I haven't been able to find any concrete leads on it since I found it, it's just sat there on my topic list. Totally untouched. Allow me to introduce you to the mysterious farming game that's puzzled the Tip of My Joystick subreddit for about three years now. Tip of My Joystick, if you're unaware, is a play on the name of the Tip of My Tongue subreddit, which primarily focuses on hunting down the source of various things that people vaguely remember. Typically, someone will give a detail about something, 
and Redditors will jump in to suggest some answers as to what it could be. In April of 2016, a post was made by a user named Sparta213 who was inquiring on a video game that was, quote, kind of like Harvest Moon. It reads as follows. I know almost nothing about this game. All I can remember is that it's kind of like Harvest Moon, but with a dark twist. The game starts out with you and your wife. One night you get into a fight and you end up stabbing her to death. Now, the game revolves around you farming to stay alive while trying to keep the town from finding out about the incident that happened. Every now and then, the cops come to search your house and you have to hide her corpse. Now, going by the premise, this undoubtedly sounds like an eerie take on something like Stardew Valley. While this merely garnered just around 100 upvotes and 39 comments, interest in tracking this thing down, while scant, was there. Redditors jumped in, postulating that it could potentially be a flash game, an old farming sim named Scapeland, or even a top-down RPG named Wild Season. While these are all solid contenders, they all seem to lack at least one of the details outlined by the OP. For instance, Scapeland is a 3D farming sim that bears a mechanic centering on the police haunting you down at nights, however it lacks the grim killing your wife parts. Wild Season is a top-down pixelated farming RPG However, it doesn't contain any sort of odd twist. And regarding Flash games, OP actually went forth to denounce it, claiming, Edit. I have no recollection of what console this game was for or when it came out. I know that it was released after 2000. I know this is so vague, but it's really hard to remember something you forgot. Also, it had to be before mid to early 2015. Graphics were not 3D. I'm 100% sure it wasn't a browser game. So, dead end. OP did go forth to explain in a few comments that he carries a gut feeling that it was released after the year 2000 and also that it was much more refined than a simple flash game. Because of the obscure nature of this, combined with the fact that nobody was able to dig up anything about this, a user named Mikori chimed in with the postulation. At this point, the most likely origin of this game is your dreams. It's the exact sort of thing the average dream will create. Harvest Moon, crossed with a terrible incident you have to suffer through in guilt while nobody around you actively notices, and are just generally probably suspicious of you. Everyone has the guilt dream. This looks like yours. You probably mixed it up with real life, as everyone does sometimes. With how odd it is, and how much actual gameplay and art they'd have to create to get it off the ground, I highly doubt anyone actually made this. It seems plausible. I've personally dreamed up some incredibly obscure situations, and for Sparta, this very easily could have been one of theirs. Unfortunately, though, without anywhere to go by this point, the mystery surrounding this seemed to fade just as fast as it came, as Redditors simply moved on to other ventures. That was... Until nearly three years later. Out of absolutely nowhere, on December 16th of 2018, a user named David Spade AMA jumped onto the board to post the following. Evil Farming Game There was this game I used to have downloaded around 2006 before I upgraded my computer and lost it. It was a farming, Stardew Valley style of game where you murder your wife and then you try to pretend you never killed her. And that was the whole game. Keep farming and make sure no one finds out you killed her. There was a fishing mini game, and I specifically remember fishing up evidence of your wife's murder, and then you pass out. As you'd expect, people were quick to jump on the connection to the post from three years prior. What some were led to believe was simply a dream or a non-existent fragment of the prior OP's imagination began to lean closer to the potential of being entirely real. In a reply, linking his post to the former, OP claims, Oh wow, I thought I was the only one. Not mentioned in that post was the pixel art gameplay and weird cutscenes in a different art style. It was downloaded off some shoddy indie devs websites that also had a ton of graphic live leak style videos to download. The name was so out there that I can't think of what it was. It might have started with Ash and then kept going, but that might have been in other sites. 
So before we continue, I want to point out something that doesn't quite line up. We have this lost, disturbing farming game that supposedly existed between 2000 and 2016. The prior OP claimed that it was a console release and not a PC game. But here, we have this new OP claiming that he found it on a shoddy indie dev's website that contained what seemed like shock videos and gore. While nothing damning, these claims are contradictory, which throws another obstacle in our investigation. In an edit, he jumped back in to explain that it also wasn't a kid's game, wasn't from RPG Maker, and reinforced the fact that he got it off an indie dev's website. Furthermore, he gave a detail explaining that in each day in the game, the date would pop up, and also, one of the characters was, quote, an old dude with the white beard. Gleaner Heights? Moirai? Lakeview Cabin? Unfortunately, at least according to the OP, none of these are it. Personally, I found that the closest premise out of all of these is Moirai. While not a dedicated farming game outright, it centers on the main character being thrown into a pixelated farm. Your main task involves tracking down a missing woman in some nearby caves, and after finding her, you're left to either kill her or get help. The game was actually connected to online servers, and when you're asked questions by a bloodied farmer inside the cave, your responses would pop up in a playthrough for whoever plays the game after you. For all we know, OP could be mixing things up here under the presumption that in this game, you kill your wife, possibly attributed to the fact that the person that played it before them might have mentioned something about a wife in their own responses. But even this is a pretty large stretch. A disturbing top-down farming sim is something that would undoubtedly be ingrained in my mind for many, many years. And personally, I feel like I'd know it when I see it. I know I would. But OP said this isn't it, and so the hunt continues. One month later, in a third post related to this, a user named You Done Me a Bamboozle jumped onto the subreddit in the most popular take on the topic so far. Interestingly, his post would stand out from the others as he claimed that he downloaded it onto an old laptop from 2001 and still had it in his possession. Hi all, first time posting here. Today I found my old laptop, but sadly it won't boot up, but it brought back some great memories. Specifically, the following game. At the start of the game, you killed your wife, but after that, you just lived normal managing your farm. However, it had a twist. The police could come at any time and find the body, so you had to constantly be wary and move it. The laptop was built in 2001, and I bought a new one in 2003, so it would have been between that time. It wasn't a browser game, and I think I may have gotten it from uTorrent, but I can't remember to be honest. Ladies and gentlemen, we finally had a lead. Like vultures, everyone honed in on one thing. We had to get that hard drive going by any means necessary. And what I consider the subreddit's largest act of mass collaboration, most of the commenters chimed in offering their services and even a GoFundMe in hopes of repairing that laptop as it was the primary key to unearthing the identity behind this enigmatic video game. So OP went forth to thank everyone, but declined their offerings as they lived in the UK and most that were offering were in the US. They gave an update stating that they were going to take it to a local computer store in hopes of repairing the damaged drive and would report back later. So time passes, the comment section becomes flooded with intermixed remind me posts and everyone eagerly sat, awaiting the consensus on whether or not he'd get it working. Final edit. Sad news, the laptop is buggered. The moisture of the storage I placed it in has ruined it all. Any final suggestions? Others suggested professional data recovery. OP was willing. Edit cubed. I'm retrieving quotes from professional data recovery firms. And then, update. 
The platter of the hard drive was damp and it's been deemed unrecoverable. I'm really sorry to have built hopes up. And just like that, brick wall, again. And that's where it's sat to this day. While the mystery of the lost farming game is currently lost on eager investigators that have yearned for even a shred of an answer, the hunt has admittedly been exciting. Whether or not this disturbing, pixelated, harvest moon, freeware, wife-killing, non moirai farming game ever comes to light is to be seen. But one thing's for sure. Personally, I believe it's out there. An indie game hosted on a shoddy website seems like something not that far out of the ordinary. While seemingly only discovered by an extremely narrow niche of players, we can only wait and hope that someone out there comes forth with any sort of lead. A hard drive, a website, a key hidden inside a detail, so we can finally discover what this game actually was. If you're watching this, and this sounds familiar to you, please get in contact. Post in tip of my joystick, post in my subreddits, anything. Let's put this mystery to bed. As we can see, Reddit holds a wide variety of curious oddities that span a plethora of various subreddits, and tonight, we've dug through three of them. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this pilot episode of this experimental series. If you have any suggestions of real Reddit situations, odd users, and intriguing mysteries, absolutely send them my way for potential inclusion in a future Chronicles of Reddit installment. With that being said, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I love you all. And good night.